I'm Deborah Atkinson, and you're listening to The Flipping 50 Show, where I address your top questions and struggles and help you decide how to move, what to eat, and how to change your thoughts so you can have the energy and the vitality that you want in this second half. And today, it's you and me. And I'm actually giving you a little sneak peek into Hot Not Bothered, and I'll tell you why. I'm diving deep into it this week as I'm finishing the final edits for the Kindle version. That will be online and available in Amazon.com right now for still 99 cents on pre-order. You can get that and it'll come right to your Kindle and you'll get a little email announcement that it's ready and it's actually been dumped onto your Kindle device if you grab it now. But here's what I'm covering this morning. This one happens to be number seven out of 99 flips in the book, and it's about being back smart. So I'm titling it, as you've noticed, Stop Sit-Ups and Save Your Spine. And this comes back to research that, unfortunately, I did in a primary fashion. (laughs) I didn't have very many subjects at the time because I was the sole subject. But this was back in 1987, and I was between grad school and undergrad school, and um, I took a vacation, actually out here to Colorado, climbed onto a horse at the invitation of some family friends that I had no business being on, and I think there was a little showing off by the horse owner and I had no idea what I was doing. So I made every possible mistake and you people who are horse people know this, but I was squeezing tighter, holding on to the reins and doing everything to tell the horse to go faster when I really wanted it to stop. So in a panic, as it ran through the barn, Picking up speed, I had no idea that you could actually go through the barn all the way through and it was making a circle. So I was like looking for a way to dump off, but as it turned the corner, I was thrown off onto a pile of lumber and hit right on my lower back. So long story short, the rest of my summer, three months was spent in rehab after the first three days when I probably was drugged on something, couldn't hardly get off the couch or the bed, couldn't hardly go to the bathroom, and couldn't hardly go to the chiropractor that my guests, you know, having been out of state, (laughs) arranged for me. So you get this story. But the real fast forward is, you know, for the last 30 years, because I did recover, I was successful, and it was extremely scared because it wasn't just my summer was ruined. It was that I thought I'm going to potentially be in pain for the rest of my life. And I really thought, how am I going to have the career that I really wanted to? Because there was a lot of physical activity in doing what I needed to do to serve my approaching internship in college. So let's look not just at me as the expert and the 30 years since that I've spent 34 doing research and diving in with my antenna up about core exercise knowing I was working with a lot of women and men who want flat bellies, who were doing crunches and sit-ups, learning that that was not an ideal. And yet, 34 years later, it's still the go-to, unfortunately. Stuart McGill, who's a leading authority on core strength and back injury prevention, is also the primary, the real research source with multiple subjects that probably has a little more validation than my single soul focus on myself. Anything that applies to one single person certainly does not apply to every person. But having gone through that experience and then opened myself up to what happens with other people and working with people who have both chronic long-term problems like stenosis and um, long-term pain 
limitations in their movement and quality of their life, I've become an expert. So I'm going to share with you, almost verbatim, the edited portion of this one tip right now. So we begin with waiting an hour after you rise to exercise. The weight protects your discs in your back. Any exercise, including stretching exercises that you may have once been taught to do before you get out of bed, can be more dangerous than you think. If you're used to pulling your knees up to your chest one at a time and then the other and then both, hold off on that. Bending, lifting, and twisting movements, BLT, especially in that first hour after waking, can be devastating. Even in gentler exercises that are involved in yoga, Pilates, and vigorous walking, you're at risk. Don't even think about core exercises at this time. It's not about the speed of movement or the quality of your technique, and it has nothing to do with whether you're fit or you're deconditioned. Exercise stresses on the spine are about three times higher in that first hour than they are a few hours later. After rising from bed, your discs are fully hydrated and they have much higher stress during flexion. It's more risky to train repeated bending earlier in the morning. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about crunches or sit-ups. We do that repeatedly, right? Have you ever gone to an exercise class and done one crunch, done one sit-up? No, we do multiples. We do hundreds. We think that if we do 200, you know, we have bragging rights. But even occupational studies where, let's say you're doing some factory work and you are repeatedly performing the same task over and over, and maybe it's you know, picking up a box, lifting the box, or maybe it's putting something down on a conveyor belt. Those occupational studies have shown avoiding forward flexion motion in the morning reduced disabling workplace back pain significantly. It's not just movement, though. There are two types of stress to the discs, both movement and moment stress to the spine are considered here. That is both flexion movement that you would do in a crunch or a downward dog is another kind of variation, if you will, of forward flexion. And the simple pressure, that's, that's the moment of adding force as in doing a plank or pushing a shovel or a vacuum cause stress to the spine. Both strain the layers of collagen in the spinal discs. When loads on the spine are small, movement is healthy. And that would be, so here's, a, here's an exception to the rule. I just lumped yoga in there, but there are lots of kinds of yoga. And doing, say, something on your hands and knees, a cat cow back, if you're not a yoga person or practitioner, that really means rounding your back, curving it, and then allowing it to sink. So instead, raising your chest and your tailbone and going back and forth. That type of exercise to begin your day with rather than extremely vigorous exercise can be much better. The shape of your discs and the thickness of your spine really determine how much you're at risk for herniated discs. Do you know the shape of your discs and the thickness of your spine? Few people do until it's too late. There's evidence that you have a limited number of forward flexion no matter what the status of those two variables. So it's a matter of whether you move toward injury faster or slower with forward flexion and BLT combined movements. If you've been an early morning riser and an early morning exerciser, this is not good news. Maybe I've just found you time to journal or read or start writing a book. Within an hour of being upright, 90% of that disc fluid dissipates and exercise becomes much safer. So this would be so much easier to buy into if you could feel the damage. No one has to tell you to avoid painful movement. We tend to back off of that. The problem with disc damage is you won't feel the damage happening until it's too late. It's worth a shift in your exercise schedule so you can keep exercising. And if exercise helps you negate stress, it's even more important 
that you make a shift in your morning routine so you continue to be active. So I'm going to give you a quick stop this, start this list. And you'll find this also today. I'm doubling up, double dipping, if you will, or repurposing wisely in a crunch schedule. I'm going to give you a list of stop and start, making it easier to remember. Stop exercising in that first hour after you rise. Stop hugging your knees to your chest before you get out of bed in the morning. Stop forward flexion activities and those that add resistance are worse. Stop using forward flexion or rotary torso abdominal machines in a gym. Stop using good morning exercises. If you're not familiar with what that is, that's somewhat like a deadlift. Um, and if you're not familiar with that, potentially you're not doing it, good for you. Stop associating a burn with more good for your abdominals. Stop using the back extension machine in full range of motion. Stop using a ball for crunches. The increased range of motion it allows puts you at further risk instead of getting you more results, as you might have been told. Stop bringing your ribs to your hips in a crunch. Stop sucking your belly button to your spine. Here's what to start. Start limited range of motion back extension exercise with a hip hinge. And you can do that over your dining room table or over your kitchen counter. No additional weight, just learning how to hinge at your hip, keep a straight back. Start focusing most on stabilization exercises. Start a habit of greeting the morning with a little journal time or read the paper if you prefer. You need to be upright to allow the fluid, which causes the increased pressure in your disc to dissipate. So you can't read in bed. You really need to be upright. Start planking on the ball or stirring the pot with the ball if you are ready for more challenge. Start adding back extension exercises to your regular core exercise routine. Start building endurance in the core muscles over strength. Start with alignment before you increase exercise load for the core. If you have extreme lordosis, that is a bigger curve in your lower back, or you have a flat back, your exercises should be unique. Don't follow exercise for the masses. And that's a hint for those of you who are going to a broad exercise class for you know dozens of people in the same room, all going through the same exercise. Is someone coming around to find out what's your unique situation? What's your lower back posture like? What is your upper back posture like? You have curves in your cervical spine, your thoracic spine, that's your upper back, and in your lumbar spine, your lower back, that all need some attention and concern. So if you're not being given the way to adapt for your specific postural needs, you may be doing the exact opposite of what it is that you need, driving the posture you already have or the misalignment you already have deeper. So get some individual help. I have two more coming back to stop that I want you to consider. And these two perhaps are the trickiest of the two. They are all about pain. So stop assuming pain is always a bad thing. What we know about pain and back pain is that there's a lot of variability about what people need and find to be true. Pain originates in the brain. In a prior podcast with jo Dr. Joe Tata, a friend of mine, talks more about pain and the reality of what it is and how you can get over it. But the other thing to consider is stop assuming you have to feel pain in order to do damage. So think of pain as something unique and 
realize that it's different than you potentially ever, ever thought it was before. And that's it. So now, if I've opened up a can of worms, if you have questions about anything I've said, or if you happen to be reading from the blog and you came over to the podcast, add comments below, either at the blog or the podcast on your Stop Sit Ups, Save Your Spine blog, or how to be more back smart. And I'm interested in hearing what your concerns are, what your experience has been. And I'm going to leave a couple of resources for you down below. Flat Abs Better Back is a single DVD. comes from the four DVD set, the whole flip. So if you don't need them all, but you know you need some back attention and core exercises that don't cause you problems, but actually help cause you more stabilization, more flat belly, but also, you know, when we go for that aesthetic or that vanity goal, we also get the win-win is that you're a lot less likely to risk injury to your lower back and be one of those people who suffers long-term from chronic pain. If you've got a question, leave it below and share this with a friend. Somebody you love suffers from back pain because 80% of United States adults do. And almost 80% of those adults have it recur throughout the year or at least within the first two years. And we can reduce that. We've learned a lot more about what causes it. So look forward to hearing from you and go ahead. What are you waiting for? Let's start flipping 50.